Sure. Um, DSGE models are one way of organizing your thoughts about new policies that haven't been tried before uh, or new policies where we really, if we could do an experiment, we would love to, to see, say, if we went to exchange, fixed exchange rates versus floating exchange rates or different types of monetary policy rules. Uh, we can't do experiments, so it's very hard to know. Um, and so the best, what we try to do is use models to do experiments in models. And then of course the question becomes which models, because different models can give you different answers. And so DSGE models are one way of thinking about models where you've estimated those models, where you think you have evidence from the data that they're plausible models. And so you can get the answers to policy experiments that would be very hard to actually do an experiment on. So that's an advantage. The disadvantage is that the models can be wrong and you have to be very careful with how you use them. Well, so I think within the model, it's a sort of a laboratory where you can do different experiments. And so if one advisor comes and says, look, we should do this policy, you can ask how would the economy behave under this advice um, and then see whether you like the robustness whether you like the properties of how your economy responds to different policies. And it's a way of doing those experiments in a way that you just couldn't do in reality. That's a hard question. <laughs> and partly it's hard because it depends on the, some ways, on the specific country in question. Um, I've often said that um, we need to pay attention to the deficit, of course, but we also need to pay attention to what it is we're spending on. So if the government is spending, for example, on public education, on uh, helping mothers raise young children that they have difficulties with, those are not the kind of things you want to cut. So we have to look at um, what we're spending and ask what's the social return to those investments. And then we have to say what's a reasonable plan for paying uh, for the things we really want to invest in, uh, the things that we really want to spend in. So I think it's great. I think you have to pay your bills for the things that you decide that you're going to spend on. Um, but first pay attention to what you're spending on and uh, then uh, I would not want to splash, um, cut things indiscriminately uh, without paying attention to their merits. So I don't know the particular plans of this government, but I would say um, the, the, the details of what you're cutting and the details of who you're raising taxes on matter a great deal. So I'm very excited about the explosion of new data that we have that the younger people, that when I was a young person we didn't have. So I like to joke that uh, 20 years ago we didn't have any models that could capture the main features of the, the macroeconomy of the time series. We're now lucky enough that we have many models that can do that. And they can give you very different answers. The way we can tell the difference between those models, whether they're plausible or not, is by looking at microeconomic data to help us judge whether the mechanisms in a particular model make sense or not. So I'm working with uh, various co-authors um, in, uh, in looking at microeconomic data to help us assess which of these DSGE models 
which are the forces in these DSGE models are very important. And uh, I think actually, we're, we're, not me specifically, but the young people that are working on this are making real enduring progress on identifying what really drives the monetary transmission mechanism, really how fiscal policy really works. So it's a very exciting time. Thank you.